Hello, I'm Vijay Velji. A short time ago, my company, Shellac Finishes, released its first video using my technique for French polishing. Since then, I've received many questions about Shellac. Where does it come from? How is it manufactured? I began to do some research and I realized that information about shellac production is hard to find and usually outdated. So I decided to go to India and see it for myself. I spent a month in the eastern regions of the country and had the privilege of meeting some of the folks who cultivate, harvest and process lac. I have a few videos and photographs to share with you. So come along and travel with me to the jungles of eastern India. This is Humta mountain and around it is the forest. The trees that you see at the base of the mountain are host trees that are used for the cultivation of lac. Yes, lac does grow on trees. The three most common host trees are the palash, kusum and bear or plum tree. Humta forest once had sizable populations of wildlife including tigers, but not anymore. Not far from Hunta mountain is the village of Bundu, with a population of about 30 families. The villagers build their own houses, including the roof tiles that you see here. They grow vegetables for themselves as well as for the market. Additionally, most of them are also lac cultivators. For now, they are the keepers of our forest. As long as the lac is in demand, there is an incentive for them to cultivate it. If demand falls, these very forests will be cut to create space for crop cultivation. On my right is the village headman and on the left is my guide Mr. Sharma, who buys the lac harvest from the village. He then sells it to the factory owner who processes the seed lac to manufacture shellac flakes. Let's see how lac is made. We start with the trees. The palash is the most common host tree. In the eastern regions of India, palash forests are plentiful. The palash tree is also called the flame of the forest. It is in full bloom during the month of February. During this time, the flowers are collected to extract the red dye used for commercial purposes. The other common host tree is the bear or plum tree. The fruits are sold commercially also. The palash and bear tree lac is called rangini. The literal translation means colorful. The lac produced from these two host trees contains more color and wax. The best lac comes from the kusum tree. This one is 100 years old. The lac produced by the kusum tree is called kusumi. It has a light golden color and contains the least amount of wax. Let's take a look at the insects that make lac. They belong to a family of scale insects called Lassifer laca. This is what the male lac bug looks like. The male bug plays a minor part in the production of shellac. His only role is procreation. The female looks quite different from the male. She's the one that does most of the work, producing the lac resin. The cultivation process begins when live insects from the previous season are placed in bags that are tied to the host trees. Large numbers of tiny red larvae emerge from each female and settle on the tender new growth of the host tree. When the larvae have fixed their positions and inserted their proboscis into the tree, they begin to secrete a dark red chitinous scale and a yellow to reddish substance called lac resin. The insect matures under the protective covering of the resin which becomes hard. The larvae grow inside the cell and become sexually mature male and female insects in about eight weeks. The female cells remain fixed to the twig. The male insects crawl out of their cells to fertilize several females and die. The female insects grow in size to accommodate their large number of eggs. The production of resin and wax now increases at a faster rate. In 14 weeks, the females lay eggs again. The new larvae hatch and emerge to begin a new life cycle of about six months. Thus, the insect completes two life cycles in a year, yielding two lac crops. 
it takes about 300,000 insects to produce one kilogram of shellac. This is what fully encrusted trees look like. The white threads seen on the encrustations are wax secreted by the insects through their breathing and anal pores. As the life cycle of the insect comes to an end, the secretion of wax decreases. In a few days, harvesting will begin. The branches of the trees get pruned twice a year. Here is a short video of the pruning. The lac encrusted branches are scraped and the dried lac is accumulated. This is called stick lac. It contains the dead insects and the red dye that they have produced along with the tree bark and other debris. The stick lac is broken up and cleaned to get rid of the debris. After cleaning, it is called seed lac. This is what seed lac looks like. Seed lac is sold on the open market to middlemen or to a mass purchaser like my guide Mr. Sharma. This is Mr. Gupta, a close friend as well as a shellac producer. Let's go to his factory and see how the shellac is extracted from seed lac. This is Mr. Gupta's factory where he produces handmade and machine made shellac. The seed lac is cleaned once again to get rid of all remaining debris. I found this photo in a book published in 1930. The cleaning is done by hand in the same way even today. Piles of seed lac are cleaned one portion at a time to remove all the debris. The seed lac is put into vats with water and is crushed to break open the pods to release the red dye. The dye is used as coloring matter in the textile, printing and food industry. In Mr. Gupta's factory, a mechanical process is used for breaking open the seed lac pods. A large mechanized drum with steel balls is used for this purpose. After washing, the seed lac is spread out to dry. The seed lac is now ready for processing to extract the shellac. This is a photo from a book printed in 1935 showing how shellac was made. Do you see any difference? It's still the same today. The seed lac is put into a cloth bag. One end is held in front of an oven and the other is attached to a crank which is gradually turned. Heat from the oven melts the seed lac, which is forced out through the cloth bag. The molten shellac is dropped onto a tin sheet, forming small discs referred to as button lac. Before it leaves the factory, it is stamped with the company logo. The cloth bag that was used in the process is cleaned and recycled. In another process, the molten shellac is spread over a porcelain cylinder filled with hot water. The worker spreads the shellac over the cylinder with a palm leaf and then wipes it to get a shine. After the sheet has cooled a bit, it is pulled off the cylinder. He then grabs the sheet with his hands, toes and mouth to stretch it as much as he can. Once cool, the sheet is broken to make flakes. 
The impurity that stays in the cloth bag after the heat extraction is called kirilak. It still has quite a bit of shellac in it and is used to make garnet shellac, a darker variety. Shellac is also extracted from seed lac by machine. First it is heated over steam pipes and then pressed for extraction. The extracted shellac is pressed in between rollers to create a thin sheet. This is broken up to make flakes. Here is a video of a machine in operation. Pardon the quality. Lighting is kept to a minimum to keep the factory cool. You are seeing the manufacture of waxy shellac. A small percentage of woodworkers continue to use it. I recommend using DVAC shellac for its improved moisture resistance and durability. It is made by a process where waxy shellac is dissolved in a solvent to extract the wax. At shellac finishes we carry five different varieties of fresh DVAC shellac flakes. You can find us on the web at shellacfinishes.com. I hope you've enjoyed this brief presentation about the cultivation and manufacture of shellac. The fuller story of shellac is ancient and fascinating and I hope to tell it at a later date. In the meantime, feel free to contact me with any questions. Goodbye and happy finishing.